Hey there everyone, it's Heather Smith with BarrelRacingTips.com. I'm just a couple minutes early for our special live video where Chance with Silver Lining Herbs is going to be coming on here in just a couple minutes. So I wanted to welcome those of you who are joining in already. And yay, it looks like Chance is already here. All right, we're just waiting for a chance with Silver Lining to join us. Looks like it's connecting. I'll confirm here in a minute. Oh, there he is. Hey, Chance. Good day. Hey, everybody. Okay, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit just to make sure I'm optimizing the connection. Oh, can hey, you Chance, hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Awesome. So, okay. Perfect. I have the barn door open. The connectivity in this metal building sometimes isn't great, but it's like 85 degrees here, and so the breeze is nice. But then the then there's the wind factor, which can create some noise. So anyway, lots of things to consider. But <laughs> it seems like we're working and it's going now. So it looks like a gorgeous day where you're at. Yeah, it is. You know, we're 70 degrees and it's breezy here too. So I'm kind of like behind my shop and between my corrals and trying to have a nice outside uh, view here. But uh, yeah, the wind kind of made it a little challenging. And I was just far enough from my house where my Wi-Fi was trying to connect. So I had to disconnect yeah. my Wi-Fi so I can just be on my on uh, the signal there. So Right. Lots of factors to bring you guys these live videos <laughs> go in the, behind the scenes. But I've got Pistol here, and uh, he's content. He's just been hanging out for a few minutes. And so I'm excited to get started. But those of you who are tuning in, do feel free at any moment if the connection is kind of spotty or if you hear any wind noise, because we're not always aware of that. So those of you who are tuning in, feel free to comment and let us know if there's an issue as we go. So um, I wanted to go ahead and just, again, thank everybody who's already tuning in. And thank you, Chance, for this opportunity to connect. I just yeah, want to review you really quickly, and then you can go ahead and be kind of off and running with uh, your intentions for our time together today. But I mentioned in some of the posts that I, uh, that I shared leading up to this, that one of my, uh, our, our focuses and our ideas for this time was to give people some tools and some options for actually checking and analyzing their horse's well being. Just because sometimes it's really obvious and our horses, their symptoms are really clear that something's kind of off or they're not quite at their best with their health. Um, but a lot of times, either there's something that's really subtle or things that might not even be showing symptoms yet, where if we have the knowledge and the tools and the options, to be able to check them over, we can completely prevent those things, or we could just um, make sure to that we're really optimizing their health and performance. And the beauty of it is that there's actual ways that we can do this, um, and that's what Chance is going to prepare us with today, and by using some acupressure points. And so Chance actually yep. has a horse handy there too to do some demonstration. I've got pistol here. And so I actually chance to do this about once a week. I go over um, a variety of acupressure points and kind of check our horses over. And I think Great. this is really an excellent idea. But those of you, I wanted to make sure I pointed out, if you don't have the Silver Lining Herbs AccuPoint chart yet, I just put the image on a Word document and printed it out. But you can, I'll mention it again, but you can get this number in the post that I shared um, just recently on my timeline on Instagram. If you text the word chart to the number 844-200-7901, you can get a copy of this Silver Lining Herbs acupressure uh, ch chart, and we'll refer to that here today. So why don't you, Chance, go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the, like, the meaning that these acupoints can give us and the information they can provide us about our horse's needs and how um, you know, we can support them nutritionally with Silver Lining. Yeah, you bet. So I think you're you're smart to do um, what you said, um, you mentioned, as far as check these horses from time to time, whether that's weekly or monthly or bi-monthly or what have you. Um, that's, that's just a huge advantage to know this information. You know, horses are, I love horses. Horses are the best creature God has, has ever created. And 
you know, I'm so sympathetic and empathetic uh, towards them because, you know, we can't whip either end of these things. They can paw us into the ground or kick us across the, the stall, but they show up for work every single day. And, uh, you know, whether they're hurt or um, tired or otherwise, and, and they show up to give us their, their best. And, you know, unfortunately, not all horses are treated as good as pistol <laughs> there. You know, so, some, uh, you know, uh, don't have owners that uh, know how to communicate or, or learn how to communicate as well with their, their horses or, you know, just haven't been told this information. And so, you know, this is why we're here is to be an advocate for the horse to try to help horses out. You know, um, like I said, they communicate in a lot of ways, but uh, we don't always pick up on all, all those ways. So acupressure is one of those ways that we can, can pick up on um, some kind of head off some issues before they become issues, really, you know, and especially I mean, barrel racing industry, I mean, it's so competitive. I mean, you can't go to any barrel race in the country right now and not have legit 1D horses that are there. I mean, that's right. just, that's just it. I mean, you know, there's a little uh, $30, uh, oh my gosh, it got so windy all of a sudden. There's, there's a little $30 jackpot here uh, locally here tonight, and there's going to be, you know, low 17s right, ran on a standard pattern there, you know? I mean, so it's just, it's just remarkable to me how, how incredible this competitive it is. And because of that, we got to really pay attention and hone in on our horse health as much as possible. So they're um, competing at, their, at the highest level. And so these active pressure points are, are a great tool in order to, to help that out. Um, so acupressure, ac you might be familiar with acupuncture. So it's all energy running through through the horse. So I'll turn around so you can see see my horse here. This is my wife's good barrel barrel horse uh, derby here. Um, but if if you look at this horse's back, there, there's different energy highways, different meridians, energy meridians that are going going through here. And one that we're going to focus on today is the bladder meridian. So along the bladder meridian, there's different acupressure points that are associated with different organs um, of the body. And if there's what we call one that's hot or has energy, then um, that, that means we need to give them some, uh, some attention to that, whether that's nutritionally or um, rubbing that point out or it might be through like red light therapy or um, like a Vita floor or something like that. But there's different things you can do to, to help help these horses out and, and relieve some of that, that um, stress. And these points that show up, these hot points, um, they're gonna show up here way before they show up like in a, a blood test or, or something like that. So this right. can be a huge help to avoid um, vet bills too. So, um, so just really good, good things to, to learn and as I, as I go across some of these points, um, we're going to talk about the products that, that are associated um, on silver lining to, to help relieve these. You know, we can't, we can't trump nutrition. You yeah. know, everything, everything has to be simulated at the cellular level. And, and if it's not, if you don't actually have those building blocks, those tools to create something, then, then you're really nothing. I mean, you can, all, I, we chiropractor our horses, we red light therapy our horses, we do all these different things, but nothing replaces nutrition. You know, it's like, I can, I can build a house, but unless you give me all the, um, well, you know, you're building a house. So, yes. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can build a house right now, but if I give you all the, um, everything to build that house, except for the nails, Right. You're not going to get very far, you know? And right. The you need quality are... builders, quality materials. Yep, exactly. And so that's the same thing here. You know, we can we can feed our horses hay and give them grain and, and have their ma macronutrients really taken care of. But until we start fi figuring out those micronutrients, that's what's really going to make the, the difference for, for these horses. So we'll kind of go over three or four of these acupressure points. So um, you guys can be familiar with them that uh, are most commonly used. And we can talk about products associated with that and, and go from there. But um, one, the one that I really, really like is the immune point. So, so super important. Uh, you know, these horses, we travel with them a lot. You know, especially if are getting so, so uh, 
popular. So we're taking young horses to a lot of different, different places um, a lot. And so there's a place to check your horse's immune system uh, that um, is super easy. And you, you go by this point every day when you, you saddle your horse. So where, where it's at, and I hope you can, can see this um, well. So basically where her, her leg is disappearing into her barrel right there, if you take one finger right, right where that leg disappeared into that, that barrel and that muscle right there, if you go behind that muscle and press straight forward and she would act discomforted, you know, she might wring her tail, she might turn her head, um, you know, act like she didn't care for that. That'd be a sign that your horse's immune system is. And you're, you have a lot better view with, with Heather right there. Um, so yeah, if, if Pistol's immune system was down, you know, he would pin his ears or twitch his tail or, or look at her <clears throat> right there. So she'll give you a side view. So there are certain points where I know he's typically reactive, but this isn't one of them, thankfully. But it's no coincidence, I'm sure, that he is on the silver lining immune support right now, too. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. So that, that's a super easy point, and that's a way to kind of ward off so many different different things, you know, especially, you know, <clears throat> weather's as crazy as it is right now and uh, everything. So um, keep your immune system strong. So we have a combination called 24 immune support, and our philosophy is that you cannot be sick and healthy at the same time. So right. there's, you know, your environment makes a difference on your immune system, but nutrition really, really does. And so um, if we... Uh, can have herbs that are stimulating and enhancing and boosting to the immune system. Then we can ward off so many different things. So many maturity rider, riders will tell me this all, all the time, you know, especially going to like the Oklahoma City on those three-year-olds and uh -huh. to the BFA there. And, and uh, well, Joy Wargo and Ashley Schaefer, they have two really great um, testimonials there. Joy, I think it was Joy. It was either, it was one of the two. I can't remember for sure, but Two years ago, they forgot to put their horses on the immune support prior to, to going. And they have been putting them on the immune support for like five years prior to that. And uh, their horses got, got sick and never have gotten sick in the five years prior. So, wow. I like, oh, okay. Yeah, I got, I got to keep doing that. That, that right. immune support was doing something, you know? Yeah. And with younger horses, especially their stress levels, I mean, because they just don't have the experience under their belt, like their stress levels, whether we, whether they act stressed or not, you know, like, you know, they're going to be experiencing some stress, which is going to ultimately compromise their immune system. So it is so smart to take those proactive measures and do as much as we can from a prevention point of view. And I know when you have horses long enough, if you've ever been through those sicknesses or injuries, and you know how, um, you know, not ideal it is to go through that, whether you have to doctor them for hours a day, you know, every day for months, or you get sidelined with, you know, with something and you can't yep. continue eating. Oh, you learn through experience that prevention, prevention, <laughs> prevention is the way yes. to go. Absolutely. Exactly. You know, and so like the times that I use our, our immune support is, you know, whenever we're, we're boarding our horses for sure. Like if we're at a, a long weekend jackpot, we're going to be stalling our horses. That'd be appropriate time to, to do that. Um, if, uh, you know, I heard something like strangles was in the area or West Nile, you know, those would be appropriate things to um, use the immune support on, you know, if my horse did have a cough or a runny nose or, or something like that, like a lot of people, like probably the most common question I'll get is um, my horse, you know, coughs a handful of times as I'm starting to lope them. And uh, that's just a little sign that they're immune compromised and you need to pick that immune system up. Yeah, that actually happened to our boys. I think it was last fall. And it was really with both of them. And they don't, neither one of them tend to have any respiratory issues. So it was just a unique circumstance and it was really subtle. But we yep. immediately got a bag of even the respiratory support and put them both on that. And it was just gone. Perfect. Eliminated. I mean, but we finished out the bag and it was no, no issue. So. Perfect. Well, very, very good. Um, <laughs> let me show you another point here. Um, so ulcers. Ulcers is a big thing in, in horses. Yeah. And uh, high, high stress. Um, you know, again, going back to maturity horses, just younger 
um, and they're making them do more earlier. And uh, so there's a, an acupressure point that will save you a lot of money um, that you don't have to go get scoped or, or things like this. This, this is real stuff here. So if you go underneath the, the belly of the horse and I'm trying to see here with the sunshine here, but uh, so the, so we have the, let's see here. So we have the back of the sternum and then we have the navel. So right that halfway point there. So if you press straight up there with like one finger firm pressure um, and they'd be reactive there, they might like arc their back or pick their back foot up at you and, and try to kick you or, or look at you, you know, just a sign of discomfort. Um, that'd be a sign that they have a little stomach thing that that's bothering them. Okay. There. So, um, and I don't know if you can, you can show them Heather with your horse. They'll just stand sideways like, like that. Give them a good, good view. So, and again, too, when you were explaining it, Chance, I zoomed in on the chart. Um, okay. Show the point. So those, those of you um, who are watching, if it was hard to see, um, but again, I mentioned the number to get this chart in my last post on Instagram, those of you who are watching. So, so yeah, just find the end of their sternum there and then find their navel. And so it's halfway between those two points. So approximately four inches behind the back of the, the sternum there. So just firm pressure up there with one finger. And uh, if there was an ulcer situation going down, going on, then it arc their back or act discomforted in, in some way. So right. Pistol's doing good. And, and so, so far, so here. good. Like I said, you know, um, he has, he's 17. He's been with me almost his whole life. And so he's had some past injuries. He has some things that we manage or that I consider somewhat chronic. Um, but thankfully, ulcers hasn't been one of them throughout history. I mean, that we've had them, you know, but that's the thing is that they all, there's always the potential for them to develop. And if you can, if you can catch them early and get things back on track, that's so valuable. And I wanted to mention too, even the things that we consider chronic, because uh, just because you've had a horse forever and they've had a specific issue long-term doesn't necessarily mean that there's an answer or a resolution for it just around the corner. If we're really open-minded and if we're really constantly learning um, just because I'm out here and I'm palpating and there's some area of soreness that has been there before or it's been there for a while doesn't mean that I'm going to stop looking at options for re getting rid of it, you know, and that there are those options out there. But that's another reason why I resonate with Silver Lining so much is that we're really doing everything we can from that foundational level versus just looking at um, covering up symptoms. And so that's why it's so amazing to be able to support these horses nutritionally, you know, and um, prevent a lot of this and just set them up, like you were saying, for not just ultimate performance, to give ourselves the best odds for success in competition, but just for their, their own health and well-being long-term. So we have, you know, we have .com, our other horse, our great gelding, and Pistol are like lifers with us, you know, and so we put so much into them, and we want to continue competing on them um, as long as possible, and so this is a huge part of that. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and I remember I did my college internship uh, with Silver Lining Herbs, and the owner, Mickey Young, the very first comment he made to me when I started my internship there is, you know, we can't change this life, the life-death process. They're all born one day. They're all going to die one day. But they don't have to get sick and die. They don't have to get crippled and die. You know, the goal is to have them get old and die, you know. And right. so it's things we do on a daily basis that will help us cause that to be a high quality of life t till the end. So, I mean, just because they're, they're 22 years old doesn't mean that they're, they're done. You know, they got a lot to offer still at, at that age. Yeah. <clears throat> So, so perfect. Um, the other point I want to, uh, oh, talking about ulcers, I should finish my, my thought on ulcers, is we've got a combination called number 29 LCR. So our view of ulcers is to really hit every aspect of it with this combination. So there's soothing herbs in there. There's alkaline herbs in there. There's antibacterial herbs in there to get rid of that bacteria that's living in that, that lesion. And there's also some good healing herbs in there. So if we can soothe the stomach, make it more alkaline, 
uh, get rid of that bacteria that makes it hard to heal and then also promote healing. Then we can get over those things. You know, we've got a lot of people that use it as a preventative or as a treatment and it would work great either, either way. Um, you know, you said these chronic, chronic things, you know, and they tell me how many horses have, have ulcers. I guess I've just been, been fortunate to not, not have any, but uh, honestly, I just feel like if you do, again, going back to the daily steps to ensure good quality of life, you don't have right. these, these Management, things. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I've, I've unfortunately never had, had an issue with, with that. So thankful. Thank yeah, for that. yeah, it was really eye opening to us a few years ago when we realized that um, dot com had ulcers. It was so eye opening because I think it was, and it was a lot to do with uh, just how I tended to keep horses over the years. Where I really, did, looking back, there was maybe one horse that I had in history that I actually think had ulcers looking back, and I didn't realize it at the time. But it was a huge learning curve in figuring that piece out with dot com because he does have that tendency. He is wired, like just personality wise, a lot different than Pistol. Um, but when we take the measures to support him, we've used and had a lot of success with the LCR and just highly, highly recommend that um, for him for uh, for the ulcers and to as a preventative, you know, and any time that there's going to be stress, like I think people think that um, like they either have ulcers or they don't, but the truth is, is that they can have some level of just stomach upset and it can be just the slightest thing that just like stresses them out or even the act of just loafing around. You know, there are all these contributing factors, hauling and so forth, that we have no idea of or understand, yep. you know, we can't really relate to. Um, and just because they look reasonably relaxed or they are not losing weight, you know, doesn't mean that they're not really, really at risk. And Absolutely. so for .com, it was mainly like behavioral issues, you know, like just acting really uh, overly reactive and sensitive and hot, you know, and um, even a little bit spooky at times. And so it was amazing when we got that, um, got that, that back on track, how he was just like a totally different horse. But the LCR will continue, did have when we first figured this out and has continued because it's something we absolutely stand top of with him and LCR the silver lining product plays a huge part in that. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you know, there's there's so many different things. Like my my brother has runner's gut right now, and that's basically a lot of acid build up from the drawing around of, of running, you know, and, and just like you're saying, like riding in the trailer and a lot of exercise and things like that, you know. So if we can ward that that off with, with help, uh, like reducing that acid and, and uh, balancing that pH out, then we'll have a lot healthier digestive systems for our, our horses. Right. And even yep. laid back guys like these who don't necessarily tend to have a tendency toward ulcers, man, when you, when you start to get a high alert and you just become, you learn through those experiences and you become so much more aware, there yeah. are times I even think, I think ahead, I'm like, if these horses are going to be under any sort of stress, like in their feed, like that morning or that evening or whatever's closest to whatever's potentially stressful, or sometimes I'll even give them a snack, a little bit of feed, and, and then put a couple scoops of the LCR, or put, put a scoop of LCR, like for .com, and then a scoop of Keep Cool in it, again, yep. just as a preventative, so. Yep. And then for him, again, too, just as needed here and there, when I know, even, even whether he doesn't necessarily act stressed out, if I know there's going to be some element of stress, I can just give him a little tummy soothing snack, you know, yep. and everything will stay on track. So, absolutely. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is, you know, prepare for a race and then you go to a jackpot and then you can't have your horse feeling 100%. So, pretty right. easy thing to uh, a preventative, you know, and I don't yeah. think a, prevention is a pound of cure. So, absolutely. absolutely. So, there's two other points I want to want to share with you, and they're both super okay. popular this time of, of year. One is uh, our liver point. And so the liver is the organ, and this is how, how I think of the, the liver. The other product, or the other point I'm going to talk to you about is kidney. But liver has to filter everything that goes in or on your horse. And, and uh, so whether that's, you know, air pollution, dust, um, if it's a uh, fly spray, if it's a vaccine, if it's a chemical dewormer, you know, if it's, uh, you know, whatever's on your hay and herbicide, insecticide, uh, you know, I mean, our horses just can't escape it today. We got all these chemtrails in the sky here and, 
and things like that. So, I mean, even if you're feeding organic and all that kind of stuff, I mean, just lifestyle today, you can't, can't avoid the, the toxicities um, and the pollutants that, that, that get put in their, in their, uh, in their environment. So right. today's horse's liver has to work harder than it's ever had to work before in its entire life. And at the same time, it's more deficient than it's ever been in its entire life. So the example I always make to people is a dandelion. So dandelion is the very best kidney, liver, blood purifying herb that God has created. And then man goes in there and say, deems that dandelion a weed. So we say, hey, get rid of those weeds out of our, our pasture. And uh, so not only do we just subject that horse to a herbicide to kill that dandelion, but also um, we just took away the very herb, the very plant that's going to help nourish and purge the, the liver, those toxins out of the body. So the horses get hit twofold on, on the liver side, side of things. So, you know, people think, well, you know, why, why support the, the liver? Well, you know, I hear people say like, hey, my horse is 12 years old, never had allergies before. And all of a sudden he's got really bad allergies this year. Well, that's just a deficiency of the liver because the liver is responsible for the allergen response, the histamine production. So that's just years of deficiency finally poked his head out, you know, yeah. and, and we've seen the, seen the symptoms of it. So again, prevention is what we're, we're after, you know, and as a horse owner, and my job is to take care of my, my horses, I, I'm not allowing them to have all the dating lines they have because I just not, you know, I got three acres of pasture and they just don't have that variety and that access to it. So it's up to, to me to provide that, that for them. So, um, and, and there's a way to tell if your horse is really in need of it, but we suggest the liver support twice a year, uh, spring and fall, regardless. So the liver point here on the left side of the, the horse, and we're about three inches from the backbone, or halfway between the wither and the flank. So right in that midpoint of, of the back there, and if you'd press straight down right there and have that horse, you know, buckle her, her back a little bit or, or something like that, like that, that'd tell me that her liver is bothering her. In fact, our horses have been on their number 27 liver support for about a month now. We're just wrap, wrapping that up. Um, like I said, because we don't have the op, op, they don't have the option. We don't give them the option of, of that kind of uh, uh, vegetation. So it's up to us to, to replace it for them. Yeah, I love you sharing that. He doesn't, he didn't seem reactive on that point, but I know if I move further back, closer to the kidney point he does and this is just me knowing him and that's a place where he tends to lately has had some reactivity but I love what you said about the liver about it being you know the body's filter and how important it is to try to reduce the level of toxins every, in every way that we can that our horses that are just assaulting our horses and we'll never be able to eliminate all of it but the thing one of the great perspectives that is for us too is that ultimately a lot of times what that ends up leading to is that um the more sort of toxins build up essentially so a lot of the times um that's when you'll see older horses they just this is my theory you know they've been on the earth longer or it's just like people and so their tendency for buildup is just greater and therefore they're more likely to show symptoms of problems and so often some of these symptoms are just kind of weird random stuff that doesn't have like a really like a clear answer or it's not like always a diagnosable thing that like you're going to be able to go to your vet or go to a doctor and say yeah i have this like fatigue or i have this or that and they're not really going to be able to pinpoint it and tell you that that's what it is and then there's yep. it's not necessarily and it's easier to just um, help support those the function of those organs so that they can do their job to the maximum, you know, and um, and the immune system and so forth. Uh, again, so we're just setting these guys up to have the minimal possible um, toxic burden, you could say, you know, as they yeah. get the age. Absolutely, you know, I mean, you know, the horses get in their prime when they're 12 years old or something like that, and they've been on the earth, you know, for 12 years and having that in their system and. You know, today's horses, performance horses, all we're worried about is building them up and making them perform better. But we never give a, a thought to, let's get that good stuff out of the body or get the bad stuff out of the body because that good stuff that we gave them became waste after it's been utilized. And so if we've never done anything to the body to help get that out, the, 
body's not even accepting that good stuff to their fullest potential. You know, I mean, you can give them all the good stuff in the, in the world, but eventually the body's had enough if you don't ever make room for more good stuff to, to come in, if that, that makes sense to you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's really important too is to really closely analyze what we are putting in our horses' bodies and knowing that there are ingredients, like we might not see the negative effects of it or it might seem harmless or we not, might not be super educated about what's really in it and the potential harm that it could create. It might not happen today or tomorrow. It could be years later, you know? Yep. Uh, that's why it's just so critical. And that's the beauty of silver lining is that if we're proactive and really educate ourselves and address this nutritional support from a foundational level, we're going to find these like just blooming, like healthy horses yeah. who uh, need just to have, can have a really simple program where you don't have to add something for, you know, every little thing. And then along Absolutely. with all those things that you end up adding and piecing together as far as their diet goes, comes with a lot of miscellaneous additives, you know, that yeah. like, um, that ultimately just contribute and, you know, create, like we talked about negative side effects in the long run. So, yep. absolutely. You, you've got it. So the, the last one, um, that I want to talk to you about, and it's closely related to the liver is the kidney. And so the kidney is one of the only organs not protected by the structural system of the body. And everything we're asking a horse to do is to round their back and push their hind end up underneath them, especially in the barrel racing um, world. So, you know, we're asking our horses to drive off their hind end and run full speed into the, the first barrel. Then we're asking that horse to pick up its back, drive his hind end up underneath himself to rate for that first barrel. Then we're asking that horse to drive its right hind leg under, up, up underneath themselves as far as they can to get around that barrel. And all that does is put more tension over the loins, over that, that kidney. And so then we got a 30 pound saddle. We got a 150 pound rider, you know, so we got 200 ish pounds right over that, that area. So it's no wonder why my horse doesn't rate, doesn't run full speed, doesn't get around that barrel properly because there could be a lot of added tension there. And I believe that the kidney issues are outweigh the ulcer issues by a hundred times in the horse world just wow. not being picked up by it it's such a big thing it's because of the concentrated feeds so you know we live in in southern idaho here so big dairy country here so a lot of people feed alfalfa hay because that's what's most prevalent around yeah. here that's that's high protein that's super tough on on the kidneys um, a lot of calcium being filtered out there and so um those kidneys are working really hard but they're not getting anything to help nourish nourish them um even like the sweet feeds and molasses and and processed feeds and, and things like that really hard on on the kidneys so um you know we'll see things like uh tying up we'll, uh stocking up um you know sh swollen sheets thick urine um loose stools um uh, all those kind of things are associated with um with kidneys and I married, I married a barrel racer and, uh, you know, I remember when she was in college, she got this new horse and he was, he was awesome. Um, uh, but man, she, I think bought and sold like five saddles in yeah. a two months time trying to find the saddle fit for, for that horse. And knowing what I know now, you know, saddles make a difference for sure. I won't, I won't discredit that, but if you're going through five or six saddles and aren't finding the right one, it's probably not the saddle. It might be something going on with, with the horse. And I know that horse had some kidney issues thinking back about it now you know that that, that horse wouldn't back up as freely rang its feet. that's a sign of uh you know having those sore kidneys because they can't really pick up and freely move move back so you know really think about about the kidney so let me let me show you where that, that kidney okay. point is <laughs> so on the back back of her her back we got we have the um, the hip bone, the point of the hip right there. So we go straight up there from the point of the point of the hip, straight up. And we're about three inches from the back of the, the backbone still. We go about six inches ahead of that, that point. So just a couple inches in front of the, the flank, basically. And if you press right there, and you'll see her just winch just a, a little bit. So I want to really, this, you know, that'd be enough for me to say, hey, I need to, uh, you know, 
put some put her on the kidney support right there and that's to help ward off some some uh, yeah did he, what did you see there well it's um i have to go pretty deep so it's not like he just drops oh, that's good. the ground but um so it's not really superficial but i definitely can the deeper i could feel a deeper sort of a, a spasming and a tension in the soft tissue there and one thing i wanted to mention too about these acupressure points that's pretty amazing and kind of overwhelming to understand um, is that so many of these points actually give us, they don't, cases, they might give us some clues to like that actual spot, like a problem in that region. But since these meridians travel from, you know, like one end of the body to the other and are connected with, interconnected with all these different energy systems, um, the interesting thing about it is that like, and, and these are like acu this is an acupoint to tell us that there could be trouble with the kidneys right chance so it's not yep. like necessarily the kidney itself is actually pretty deep like within their body so it's not oh like yeah really feeling the kidney up there close to the no. surface but but that's a that's a good way to understand it is to realize that um some of these points are related or the in, the feedback that they give us um, is related, it can be related to some part of the body that's not even close. But one thing I was going to recommend too, um, just as a side note, and Chance, you might have some further ideas for anybody, but just before I forget, for anybody who wants to learn even more, again, make sure you get the Silver Lining Herbs chart. But this is a book for anybody who really wanted to dive deep that I have that's kind of um, the go-to for equine acupressure. And then there's an app um, that I have on my phone that I think is just called Equine AccuPoints. It's like green. Oh, yeah. The app is. So there, it's, um, it's kind of overwhelming to learn about, but a person can go so much further with all of this, and it's good to just have options to really dive deep into it. But this chart is such a good starting point. And again, you mentioned, Chance, there's different things and ways we can address when we find, address it when we find problems. But how cool is it to have these options for nutritional support from that foundational level where we can continue checking it and ultimately our goal is for that issue to resolve, you know? So, yep. um, but yeah, if you did show some reactivity in that spot, it wasn't like really off the charts, but there definitely was some there like I expected. Yep, absolutely. No, that, that's it's so important to have these tools in our tool belt, you know? I mean just like you know I, a little story about my wife's horse in college i mean five five saddles you know at, at uh, two thousand dollars a piece you know i mean yes <laughs> that's 10 grand we we spent just in saddles trying to figure out that horse's perfect fit there you know and so i mean i think about a mare I, another mare i had in college i mean she's still the most athletic horse i've, I've had to date but uh, i ended up selling her because she was an over communicator you know, she, she uh, did several different things, and, and I think she was just trying to talk to me and communicate to me and, and uh, ultimately sold her because I, I couldn't handle her trying to give me all these these signs of help, you know? And, yes. And I wish I had that mirror back because she was an awesome one, you know? And so, um, like I said, I'm so appreciative for these horses, and I'm so sympathetic for them because they just try to please us and, and do so much for us if we'll communicate to them properly because they're always trying to communicate to us so if we'll listen to them and you know do right by them i mean they'll 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 accomplish whatever we want want to accomplish with them i mean between you know proper training that that you instruct and and proper nutrition that that we um that we we promote i mean there's there's no question why the best in the business use use your fundamentals of training and, and use uh our fundamentals of of uh health because it's it's real it's truth you know and the truth right. doesn't change yeah so tell me a little bit about everything what's in the kidney support formula that you guys offer so yes yeah, so, so people say kidney cleanse there are cleansing properties there are purging properties to it um because we are trying to evacuate that bad stuff out of the body so the way i talked about chemical wise pollutant wise on like toxin wise on the liver so on the kidney side of things it's more like vitamin mineral buildup so, you know, like your calcium, um, you know, like I think about uh, arthritis. Arthritis is just an a impurity that's built up in the body that needs to be evacuated. And uh, because they're, we 
you aren't giving them anything to evacuate that, those impurities get settled in the joints and oftentimes hawks and um, stifles and, and things like that because they, they respect gravity and, and travel down downhill. So that that's a preventative, a huge preventative there just to support the kidneys, help you get arthritis out of the, the body. Calcifications, things like, uh, um, you know, like ring bone and navicular and, um, you know, bone metal metabolism issues like that. Because we aren't evacuating that out of the body, that bone starts to get built up. And so that's why we have th those issues. So that's, again, another reason to support the, support the kidneys. So we have those herbs in there to, to help purge things like that out of there. We also have nourishing herbs in there to help um, the actual organ itself function to its full, um, full potential. And also we do have some herbs in there like hydrangea in there that will break down like uh, stones and, and different things like, like that as well. So um, like if you had a horse that had sludge in her, uh, in her bladder or something like that, that would be an appropriate thing uh, to use uh, for, for that. Awesome. Well, I'll mention too, from our experience, like um, Dot Com once in a while would get a little, uh, one of his eyes would get a little bit boogery and kind of drain a little bit. And then um, he also sometimes will, um, he has wind puffs in his hind legs that will, um, you know, get a little bit more fluid in them than, you know, usually they stay pretty tight, but when he's under a heavier workload, there's more inflammation and they yep. tend to puff up. And so these are some things that a lot of people don't realize, or they think that wind puffs are just cosmetic or it's from yep. old injury, but really it can be a symptom of the body's filters not working optimally. The runny eyes can be a sign of that. Here in Texas, in this time of year, the grass and the, the weeds and I mean, everything is just like almost over the top, over abundance of growth. Like it's yep. really, really rich and I think almost a little too much for them. And yep. we see signs of um, just like kind of a subtle, um, the whole body inflammation, you know, um, wh whether it's kind of an allergy related or, um, you know, but I think it's triggered somewhat by the spring grasses. But here's the thing to think about is that it's a different perspective. It's not, is it really that that's causing it? Or is it because my body or my horse's body just isn't as prepared as it could be to just handle those little yep. assaults on their system? But they'll sometimes get just a little bit of swelling like behind their, um, their jaw. Or yep. sometimes they'll notice that their legs are just, just have a little, they're just not as tight as they usually are during this yep. time of year. And so those are some things that immediately, or if I see that dot-coms wind puffs are, are filling with fluid, um, I'll immediately think to myself, like immune support or kidney and liver, you know, like to make sure that the body's filters are opt operating at an optimal level. So, and that, so that the, it just kind of helps the body deal with um, moving those impurities out, um, handling the toxins and the, you know, the ambush that they, that they're getting from their environment and to just help their bodies operate, you know, at that premium level. So that, and then again, inflammation, even if it's a really subtle level, it's ultimately going to equal like a little bit of stiffness and soreness, even if it's really minimal. And so this is, these are, these are examples of stuff I can see, but think of all the stuff that like isn't enough, the symptoms aren't high enough for us to easily recognize it. But again, going back to prevention, like let's just make sure all these bases are covered because there's so many things going on in our bodies or our horses bodies that we really don't even know about necessarily yeah so. yeah but i mean it's been amazing um just learning like the real cause for some of that and the and realizing that there are options to completely resolve a lot of this stuff that people will just kind of write off as it is the way it is that there's there's options for, I mean, completely eliminating it as a problem and helping our horses like get their health back on track. And so it's amazing to have these tools, especially these points that you gave us, having options for making sure all these things are on track and where they need to be. And I just like, I just have like a schedule, you know, like a routine where certain a certain day of the week um i just go through all these points and and then i make notes of anything that's off it might mean taking some action ordering some silver lining herbs and then you just when you check it every week you know when something's off or if something has changed and then if something has changed 
then you'll be able to know like, okay, what else in their environment or with their training or their program has changed in the last week that could have contributed to this, you know? Yep. And so it's just really critical. It's just a very effective way for staying on top of things. Otherwise, if you're not checking regularly, something could come up and you're like, well, I wonder what caused this or what led them, you know? And then you don't really know if you're not checking regularly, so. Yep, absolutely. And it always happens in the worst timing you know like uh before a big jackpot or a big rodeo or or whatever you know and so we yeah. put a lot of time and a lot of money into this hobby of ours or this profession of ours and so we want to enjoy these these horses and uh yeah i think the more like you said the more you can get to know your horse and inquire and be curious about your horse you know on a training level or on a health issue health level I mean, just the bigger results you're going to have and the more success you're going to have because of that. Right. Well, and I want to say, too, to everybody watching that Chance has been an amazing resource for us, and he is just in general. Um, as far as the Silver Lining team goes, the whole team is incredible. But Chance has a wealth of knowledge and experience and information that, you know, the whole Silver Lining team really, um, really I uh, suggest calling them with, like, let's say you have a horse like Pistol, who, you know, you can write off so much of like who he is to his personality or his confirmation or he has this past injury or all these factors. When the thing of it is, when you really think about optimizing, it's like, well, actually, there are multiple contributors, you know, that factor in when it comes to like his really laid back personality. And it's like, well, is there something with his nutrition and his diet that could actually put a little pep in his step, you know? Um, like if was uh maybe i mean if it's like if his liver and kidneys this is just potential as an example we're off to um, operating at the highest level possible that could be that could give your horse more energy or maybe they have too much and they're overreactive tweaking something and supporting something that's out of balance with their diet can kind of bring them back into balance and help you create the horse of your dreams ultimately so that's so encouraging um that we not only have products that um, help us do that, but also people like you, Chance, that can help guide us and help take um, give the feedback that our horse is giving us and make sense of it and give us options, you know. Yep. So. Yeah, it, it definitely goes both ways, you know. I mean, we can get your horses feeling better to, you know, be faster, more energy, and, and more focused, or we can, you know, make them feel better in the fact that they're not trying to be such a free runner and things like that because their back's hurting them or you know, what have you. So, yeah, yep. no, I mean, I appreciate those, those kind words. And, and uh, we've got a great team at Silver Lining. We've got great endorsees like like you that are an advocate for horses and barrel racers and, and uh, have a common sense of approach uh, to uh, just helping everybody out for, for the better. So, um, yeah, you know, if you guys ever need help or have questions, don't be afraid to DM us on uh, Instagram or on Facebook, call us, go to our website. Um, Heather has a uh, coupon code that you can use to save 10% on your order. That's healthy horse, all one word. Use that at checkout. You'll save 10% off every time you order. Um, and we just want, want you guys as horses to feel, feel good. And, um, and uh, so you guys can enjoy them as, as much as possible for as long as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the track that we're on, and we sure we sure are making the most out of the years that we have with these guys. And so, thank you so much for helping us do that. But it's really ultimately uh, the way I look at it; it's such a win-win-win. So, you know, you guys are um, as a business are helping horses and helping the people that love them, um, helping them to be healthy, avoid problems, helping them perform at their best, helping us achieve that. And then it's so awesome to work together and have be on the same page. And many ways and then just sharing all that with others so that they can help take their horses health and performance to the highest level too so we really appreciate it and i know that i think i saw just like right now you guys have a sale is it still going on today for the immune support is that right yep, yep still going on or today tell, tell about that. yeah so 20 percent. we're kind of doing the spring madness sale this uh this month and uh, every two days, we're, we're switching on a different product uh, for 20% off. So yesterday and today is our 24 immune support, 20% off. So that's still midnight um, tonight on our website. Um, and 
Uh, then tomorrow we have our liver uh, support. Uh, so that'd be Wednesday and Thursday, liver supports 20% off. And then Friday, Saturday, our 37 kidney support will be 20% off. So take advantage of that. Um, one thing that we're really excited about next week uh, is we're launching our human line um, herbal blend ah. for, for us. You know, uh, all of us at the office have taken these combinations ourselves for about uh, since the conception. And uh, uh, we thought the timing was finally right to, to launch it on the human side of things. So uh, that's going to be a big focus of, of this, this. for us this year. We're probably going to look at about uh, 10 different combinations to be launched throughout this this year, but uh, um, be looking for, for that uh, soon, too. So, And we'll be sending Heather and Craig some of that to, to awesome. get on, on for themselves, we're too. So, we're so excited to hear that because, I mean, ultimately, we really believe our horses are really an extension and a reflection of us as far as not just our mental game, but our athleticism. And, you know, it's really hard to give our horses anything that we don't have ourselves. And so I believe I'm really uh, believe in the importance of setting ourselves up, you know, for ultimate health as well. So that's great news to hear. But I so appreciate the time that you've spent with us and the tips that you've given us and all these options for checking these acupoints with our horses is just so, so valuable. And, um, and to have options for, you know, correcting anything that's um, out of balance or just prevention is gonna just gonna be so critical as we go forward this year. So I really appreciate it. And everything you do is silver lining. Thanks so much, Chance. No, thanks for your generosity. And let us come onto your, your page and, and talk to your followers. And uh, um, yeah, just keep enjoying that beautiful Texas sunshine yeah we absolutely will and i'll mention just one more time those of you who are interested in the silver lining products again uh 10 off any product anytime with the code healthy horse on this you can enter it at checkout at the silver lining site and then don't miss out on the current sales that are going on here this spring so i know that um pistol based on uh, what we talked about i think i'm going to get him back on some kidney support and uh but he, he looks, I mean, he looks better than he ever has at 17. And so it's a, it's a big project to like keep him that way, but it's so, uh, to keep him feeling his best, but it is so worthwhile for sure. And it's a, it's a journey that I absolutely enjoy. So thanks for being part of it and helping us do that. Yeah, no, we're, we're grateful. Awesome. All right, Chance, well, we'll talk to you again. And thank you again so much for uh, joining me. And um, anybody with questions, again, check out silverliningherbs.com. Awesome. Thanks, Heather. Tell Craig hi, okay? Okay, I will. All Take right, care. we'll see ya. Yep, bye-bye.